Hello everyone and welcome to our Raspberry Pi series. Today we're going to be looking at how to set up a Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to be planning out what we want our Raspberry Pi to do. We're going to be looking at a few of the security things that might come up during the series. Um, we're going to be looking at the hardware and the software that we're going to need for the whole series. And at the end of it, we're going to be connecting the hardware together and showing you how to do that. And then we'll be getting the Raspberry Pi ready to boot. I hope you enjoy what we've got to show you and we're going to get straight on with it now. So the most important part of any project is the planning. So in this part, we're going to be looking at what we want our server to do. So basically, I want to have a NAS file server that's going to host my backups. So all my devices that are on my network, I would like to store all my files and folders from all of my devices in a centralized place so that they can back up from there. So basically, I want to store my media on there as well so I can have my movies, my TV shows and my music. And then again, that's centralized. I can play them to all my devices. I can stream them wherever I want. Um, and then I want from that centralized point, I want to be able to take my backups from there and in some form of encrypted form to securely store them on Google Drive to back them up. So that's my cloud backup. I also want to install some Docker containers and have Watchtower keep an eye on them and let me know when they need to be updated. Uh, I also want to install a next cloud server on there which I want to host my calendars and my contacts and maybe a little bit of you know small sort of file syncing if needed and I want to be able to access that from the outside so basically I can access that from the internet and from from the WAN wherever I am I can access that in the world I um, want to store a WordPress install inside my network as well to host a website um, and I also need to make sure there's some way of using a fully qualified domain name to access that from outside my network. I want to store my Bitwarden vault for all my passwords. I'd rather that be stored locally. And um, we'll get into that as we go along. Um, I don't, you know, and I want to be able to access that from the outside as well. I would like to have a Qubit torrent downloader for when I download my ISOs. Um, you know, I download lots of Linux distros and things like that. I want to be able to um, have a place to see that to give back to the community. Um, I'm also going to install, show how to install different applications. There's going to be many in this series. Um, just to name a few, I'm going to be doing Radar, Sonar, NZB, Get. And basically, I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Whatever you want me to do, I will show you how to install that on Docker. So what makes my series a little bit different to what other YouTubers have done out there when they have covered the same subject is they don't really talk about security. I see them, you know, putting everyone permissions on folders I see them you know not using correct standardization of security so with this series I want to look a little bit more in depth at security I want to show you how to sort of setting up user accounts how to change ownerships of files and folders how to set correct permissions on files and folders how to use reverse proxies for when you're hosting stuff on your LAN that you want to access from the outside how to access that securely using SSL I also want to show you how to be anonymous. I don't want your IP to be showing to um, potential attackers so they can see where you are, what location and where you live. I want to show you how to update your dockers and how to be notified if there is any updates so you can keep the security patches on them. And I also want to show you how to keep your Raspberry Pi server up to date. So now we're going to look at what hardware you're going to need for this series. So we're going to need a Raspberry Pi 4, a case with sufficient cooling, a micro SD card, 16 gigabyte upwards, so anything more is, is up to you. An SSD drive and a SATA to USB 3.0 adapter. Now that's optional, you don't have to, you can install straight to the SD card, but I'll explain to you why you might not want to do that with this kind of setup. An external USB hard drive with enough capacity for your needs, so basically you've got to look at how many backups that you're backing up. Um, the frequency of how much data that you consume and then obviously work out what size you're going to need into the future. Um, with, with this setup, you can always, you know, upgrade to a higher USB drive later on in the future, but sometimes it's better to start as you mean to go on. You're going to need a mains powered USB hub to power the external drives, including the SSD. The official Raspberry Pi 4 power adapter and an Ethernet cable Cat5e to work with the Ethernet ports. So what software do you need? We're going to need Raspberry Pi OS ISO, the Raspberry Pi Imager, which you can get both of them from the Raspberry Pi official website. We go Once we've got it all installed on the SD card and we start the initial setup, we're going to need Open Media Vault 
and we're also going to need the internet access to download sources and upload backups. So now you should have all the hardware that you need. I'm going to show you how to put it together. So you take your Raspberry Pi and your SD card is going to go into the slot which is at the back. You're also going to need a power supply which goes into the USB-C port. You're also going to need an Ethernet cable that connects directly to your router. And you're going to need a USB hub, 3.0 hub, with a, which is powered by the mains, which will, should have enough power to power your hard drive. And we're going to have a optional SSD drive with the adapter connected to the USB 3.0 port. And then we're going to have a USB storage device to store our data on. Now you have everything set up correctly. In the next episode, we are going to be installing Raspberry Pi OS to the SD card. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.